What is going on everyone? Griffin here coming at you with some glitch gameplay and today we're going to be talking about the rogue changes coming in the 3.1 balance hotfix for rogue company. So let's head over, let's check it out. So as you can see, this is the balance changes for the 3.1 Eternal Conflict Hotfix or the mid-season balance changes. And uh, I was able to pull these over onto my own document so that I could mix and match things for videos to make them a little bit more streamlined and combine a couple of things together. But first off, we're going to talk about the rogues here. So with this change, the health regeneration delay will be reverted back to five seconds. They originally made it six seconds in the Eternal Conflict update. Now they are going to be pulling it back in this mid-season update. For Cannon, his role is changing from a defender over to a breacher, and they are changing his Gatling gun ability up just a little bit. So the headshot damage will be reduced from 18 down to 16. The body shot damage will be reduced from 15 down to 14. You will no longer be able to go prone or mount while using the Gatling gun, and the movement speed while using the Gatling gun has been reduced by 15%. For Vi, her katana is being replaced with the combat knife. The vile poison ability has a cooldown increase from 30 seconds to 40 seconds. Also, the duration for the poison pulse has been reduced from 12 seconds to 10 seconds, and they have reduced the throw distance for those poison pods. Uh, rare tenacity is being replaced with rare helping hands, and also epic replenish is being replaced with epic tenacity. For Dahlia, her APS are being replaced with Pop Smoke, her Rare Blaster perk is being replaced with Rare Evade, and Epic Replenish is being replaced with Epic Quick Hands. For Kestrel, she is getting a new updated perk loadout. So she is going to have now Rare Evade, Rare Life Drain, Rare Blaster, Epic Energized, Epic Quick Hands is being replaced with Padded Steps, Epic Stalker, Legendary Shredder Rounds, and Legendary Gadgeteer is being replaced with Legendary Restock. So as you can see, these are some pretty substantial rogue changes here. Uh, the health regeneration getting kind of reverted back to five seconds was something that I kind of felt was going to happen eventually. Um, I didn't mind the six second, you know, health regeneration delay, and it did, you know, it did cause the games to play a little bit slower. It caused the games to play a little bit campier because people were still trying to get used to it. But it was only in the game for a couple of weeks. And it's one of those situations where it's like, is it a good change? Is it a bad change? I felt like it was a decent change. It made like pushing engagements and, and taking risk a little bit more beneficial because they uh, will not get their health back for that one additional second. But with them reverting it back to five seconds, it makes sense why they are doing it. A lot of people didn't like it. It's just different, right? Whenever you have something that is like core to the game, like HP regeneration in any game whatsoever, unless you're speeding it up for people or putting a perk in there that allows you to speed it up, kind of like bounce back, but everybody has access to it, then it really kind of negates the fact that there is a health regeneration delay that is longer than five seconds. Since not everybody has access to bounce back, it makes sense why a lot of people didn't like this, especially people that prefer to play respawn game modes. Like in demolition and single life game modes where you actually regenerate your health, you didn't really feel it as much as you did in the respawn game modes because you were playing a little bit more passively, you were playing a little bit more tactically, and you were trying to like use your environment to your advantage. So whenever you did start taking bullets, it's because you're moving from one position to another position, and you were going to stay there long enough in order to get to where you needed to go for the next movement. So it's it's one of those things where the majority of the people play strike out, right? That's already been confirmed. So of course those people didn't like it whatsoever. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. Like I'm not upset about it. I'm not feeling any kind of way about it. With Cannon having his role change as a defender to a breacher makes sense. And then the Gatling gun ability is a very powerful ability that like, it, it's one of those abilities where it's like, it's either really, really, really good, and you do really, really good stuff with this ability, or you just 
don't. I normally don't use the cannon oil unless I'm in a situation to where it could be somewhat beneficial or at least like distract someone or distract the group of enemies long enough for my team to kind of swoop in and make things happen. There have been occasions where I've pulled it out and been able to do really, really good with it and have a great successful time with it. But it's something where you're completely exposed. The upper half of your body is completely exposed. Uh, you can't do anything whenever you have the Gatling gun out. I mean, you can jump, but now you can no longer go prone or mount it while using it. And I think going prone was the biggest problem with this, in my opinion, because whenever you go prone, like it reduces your hitbox so to such a small size. And then not only that, but like it's really hard to get headshots on him because of the way that the the shields on the minigun works in relation to how his body is whenever he's going prone with it. So it makes sense why they're doing that. And then reducing the movement speed, of course, makes sense because like you are carrying a Gatlin gun around. It is going to burn you down. I'm not sure how I feel about like that in reality, like in execution, because I need to play with it more. I need to experiment with it more because like if you slow someone down that much, then you're no longer going to be a threat on the battlefield, right? Because you're not going to be able to keep up with anybody. Like the easiest way to deal with cannon is to just run away from cannon if they slow him down too much. So I hope that that movement speed doesn't make cannon's ability absolutely completely useless, but it makes sense why they are trying to tune it in this particular way. We'll see how it fleshes itself out in execution. As for Vibe, her having her ability uh, tweaked a little bit makes sense because Vi can be a very oppressive character. She has incendiary grenades. She has two charges of the poison pods and they are able to be thrown at a fairly long distance. They stay around for a, for a fairly long time. Uh, the cooldown is not exactly that long for having two of those things in your pocket so it's good that they went in there and they increased the cooldown of it from 30 to 40 seconds and then they reduced the duration of the poison pools and then they adjusted the throw distance on it it makes sense why they did that and i'm very interested to see how vi plays like they're not removing the the way that you throw it or the quickness that you can ready the ability up or anything like that. They're essentially just going in there and like making it a little bit of a less oppressive ability. And I appreciate that. Like a lot of people that play against Vi, especially on specific maps and things where Vi can completely shut lanes and access points down to specific sites. So I'm really interested to see how this works out after the fact. Dahlia. Having her APS replaced with pop smoke, some people are like super happy about this and some people hate this. I know if I ever played Dahlia, the APS systems was something that a lot of people used, especially whenever you're pairing Dahlia with specific people, like when speed and toughness was in there for sure. When you could pair her with Anvil and she would be tougher and you would have APSs and you could play her more as a defender character. Or you pair her with Mac and you and Mac both have them and you could use her as more of a defender character or even trench like you have a trench on your team you pair with a trench now you have two APSs and two frag grenades as Dahlia so that really made it made her more of a defender heavy character depending on who she linked to in the match with them replacing it with pop smoke it is I think going to allow her to be able to move up and get more reses and be more of a support character um, it just sucks where she's not going to have access to the APS because the APS is really good and I think that a lot of people underutilize the APS in my opinion. As for Kestrel, she is getting a an entire new perk, you know, loadout update, right? And the main things is, is she's getting padded steps now and she's also getting legendary restock. And this is gonna put Kestrel OP again. Like that, this is gonna have to cause her to get a nerf at some point in the future, I feel, because her having access to padded steps, like whenever they took padded steps away from Kestrel to begin with, I was beyond happy with that because she was just a very oppressive character with the drones, with what she's able to do uh, with her ability and her passive ability and padded steps layered on top of it. And now they're giving her not only padded steps, but legendary restock. She is going to be absolutely insane. Like they didn't give her like a bump on her HP, uh, like HP perks, they didn't give her like anything else to kind of help with her with her HP, you know, feeling. But hopefully this will make her more played. I see, I've seen a lot of Kestrel still, 
Even after they nerfed the ability, I still see several Kestrels running around out in the wild. But at the end of the day, it's like, this might put her in OP territory and they may have to take one of the two new perks that they just gave to her away from her. And to be completely honest, if it's me and I had to pick one of the perks that she's getting that would make her possibly OP, remove padded steps. I think padded steps doesn't need to be a thing in the game any longer. I think that needs to be something else completely. I think that the developers need to figure out some other way to have more dynamic footsteps and ways to, you know, work around footstep audio for your specific character. So I think that padded steps should get the, the exit on that. Legendary restock is very powerful. I agree. And I think that it's going to make her very powerful. But Kestrel is one of those characters where a lot of people won't replenish back on her. And this is the way that they get replenish back on her. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you like these rogue changes that are going to be coming in the Eternal Conflict mid-season update? Uh, would you prefer some of these changes be tweaked a little bit? Or do you think that they feel right where they are? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, be sure to check that description for links to Facebook, Discord, and Twitter. Those are the places to contact me. If you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If you've already subscribed to the channel, then consider hitting that join button to become one of the 256 crew members. Lastly, on Thursdays from 8 until 11 p.m. Central Time, Sundays from 10 a.m. until we get tired, I will be streaming here on YouTube. So if you're interested and available, please feel free to stop by and say hello there. Thanks for watching, guys. Right here. He's... He's we high. We traded suck my dick. Mm, what happened, goat hey. lad? Oh, they lost. Pretty, pretty roughly. We were shit on. They lost handily. Yeah. It was beautiful. A beautiful man. Beautiful. It was a beautiful man. He'd be like, "Well, someone on my team left. Like, well, you just lost quicker. Yeah, but you, yeah. More person to kill. Yeah, you're try and match with this bitch. You." That's why he left. And somebody was probably being an asshole. Wonder who? Yeah.